It's been raining for literally like a week and a half. Anyone else get really bummed when it's weather like this? Anyways. Still so bummed I broke this. Dang it. So I heard you want to be a YouTuber, or maybe you are a YouTuber. Well, you're gonna need some gear because we all know that gear is king. But the question is, what is the best YouTube vlogging camera setup in 2021? Two things before we start. YouTube and vlogging gear is very different from traditional filmmaking gear. It's still filmmaking, but it requires a specific kind of gear to make it easier for you. For example, I would not recommend buying a C500 for YouTube and Vlogging is a definite no-no. Smaller cameras are great, autofocus is a must, and flip LCD screens are your best friend. Number two, Canon traditionally has been the king of vlogging gear. Since the glory days of Casey Neistat vlogging on a Canon 80D and all the other Canons, Canon has really been the best for vlogging. That's mostly because of one thing, and that's because they had flip LCD screens until last year. And that's when I think Sony took over being the best YouTube vlogging camera gear there is. And that's why I made the switch from Canon to Sony, and I'm not getting paid by either company. This is completely my opinion. If Canon this year or next year makes a better camera for me, I will completely 100% switch to that. Now that we've established that Sony is the king of YouTube, you heard it here first, let's talk about the best options for a YouTube vlogging setup in 2021. And let's start off with the best, the, the more money than you can imagine, unlimited budget, drum roll. It's the Sony a7S III, that's what I'm filming on right now, or the Sony FX3, which is basically the same camera, just a little bit of a different body. This one has an internal fan and it comes with this handle. These are the top of the line, best you can get YouTube vlogging cameras right now in 2021. It's by far the best vlogging camera right now. It's full frame, a small body, great autofocus, really nice image, dynamic range. If you don't know what that is, that's okay. It's just, it's good. And of course, the most important, the flip LCD screen. This is really what made Sony the best vlogging cameras in 2020. And on top of that, you still get really nice cinematic capabilities, 4K up to 120 frames per second, 1080, 240 frames per second. It's really incredible. And also don't, don't misjudge the photo capabilities. It can still take really nice photos. So it's the all in one camera, I would say. And that's really what you want for YouTube. And another really important thing is that it's full frame. And full frame is really important in my opinion. Whenever I recommend a camera to somebody, I try to reach for a full frame camera, not because it's fancy, not because it's the top of the line sensor, but because it's wide. And that's something that I think a lot of camera companies miss with this YouTube world is we want really wide focal lengths. And that's for a few different reasons. A, so it's not just a floating head <laughs> in, with a random blurry background. This just isn't very good. And B, because it makes it feel like you're here with me. You're face to face with me having a conversation. It's just, it's not just me talking to this thing. We are having this connection. When it's this tighter lens, it, it kind of feels like you're just like staring at me from a box, you know, versus, hey, how are you doing? Our eyes naturally see really wide. Just take a second and try to see how wide you get. It's crazy how, uh, how wide our eyes are. And YouTube is all about personality and being genuine and connecting with the audience. And so having this kind of personal feel where we're connecting, where we're having a conversation, it helps a lot for YouTube. And full frame cameras make it much easier to get that wide field of view but it's also gonna cost you. The Sony a7S III that I'm using right now costs 3,500 US dollars. That's a lot of money, especially if you're starting out. And that's just the camera body. This one's also a tiny bit more than this one. 
Let's talk about lenses. Dream camera setup, the best YouTube vlogging lens is the lens that I'm using right now, the 16 to 35, whether on, on Canon or Sony, the 16 to 35 goes really wide. So right now we're at 16, but it also goes tighter to 35 for let's say a photo or a B roll shot, or if you're trying to, you know, film somebody else and you need to zoom in, it's nice having this focal range, but 16, this is where I'm at most of the time, nice and wide, especially when I'm vlogging. 99% of my channel is filmed on this one lens, but it's also gonna cost you. It is just under $2,000 US. B&H does have a package right now for the Sony a7S III and the 16 and 35 for just under $5,300 which you're saving some money, but it's still, if it's an ungodly amount of money for you, don't worry, it's okay. You do not need this. This is the top of the line, the best of the best you can get right now. If I had to choose another lens, I think it might actually be the brand new Sony 14 mil F 1.8. It's even wider than this, which is really nice, but it also doesn't distort that much. It keeps the lines really nice and straight. It's a really impressive lens and it's a little bit cheaper than the 16 to 35 and it's F 1.8. So better for low light, but you can't put ND filters on it or not, at least not in an easy way. So that's a bit of a downside, but we'll talk about that in a little bit. If you don't wanna spend $3,500 on a camera body right now, the next camera that I would recommend is the Sony a7C, which is an $1,800 camera. It's still full frame, 4K, a lot of really great features like a flip LCD screen. It's smaller, 120 frames per second, all of that good stuff and it's half the price of the Sony a7S III. Pair that with that 14 mil that I was talking about and you have a really small vlogging camera package that's still really high quality, like really nice. Nobody's gonna be saying like, you should step up your quality with that camera. That is still not quite top of the line, but still really, really good. There's also some cheaper lenses that you could opt for. For example, the Sony 20 mil, it's not quite as wide as this 16 mil or the 14 mil, but it's $800, so a lot more affordable. And you could still get away with a 20 mil, I think, for vlogging. Tamron also makes a 17 to 28 millimeter, which is close to the 16 to 35 for only $800 but I haven't tried this lens. What I have found with not native like Sony lenses, the autofocus isn't gonna be quite as good. It might still be fine, it might be usable, but it won't be quite as good. So just be warned. And if you wanna go really budget, Rokinon makes an 18 millimeter for $300. Again, autofocus probably won't be as good, but it'll do the job. And if all this is still way too expensive for you, then the next notch down, I think right now I would either say get the Canon RP, which then begs the question of what lens do you put on there and that might get really expensive. But for $1,000, you can get a full frame camera. If you don't get all the extra fancy bells and whistles of 4K 120 and all of that stuff, but it is gonna do YouTube and vlogging pretty well. And if you don't want that, then I would maybe recommend something like the Sony a6400, which isn't a camera that I really have any experience with. It is crop censored. So for example, B&H right now has a Sony Alpha a6400 mirrorless digital camera with 16 to 50 mil lens and accessories kit, basically everything you need, memory card, all that stuff for $1,000 which is pretty affordable, but it is crop censored. So that 16 millimeter, which you think is really wide, is actually uh, the equivalent to 24, which is this focal length. So instead of that, you're getting that. It's quite a big difference. You can still get away with it. 24, I think is like the bare minimum, but I like to go much wider than that. Still too expensive. I don't have that much money to put into a camera right now. That's okay, we've all been there. I remember saving up for my first cameras. What do I recommend then? Your phone, your smartphone, especially anything with an ultra wide angle. I love this little iPhone mini. It's still my daily driver smartphone. This is incredible. Just figure out a better audio solution because the mics aren't 
the best. It'll be better to have a nicer mic like I'm using right now. But this is an incredible tool right here. So often I'm mixing in uh, just a few shots on my iPhone and I don't think most people even realize that I'm just vlogging on my iPhone and not my $6,000 or whatever this thing costs set up, which is just so much money. Remember. Here is king! Then what about the other gear you need? Let's first talk about ND filters. I know I've probably taught you guys a million times, uh, you need an ND filter, shutter speed, you know, 50 for 24 frames per second, blah, blah, blah. I don't think it's necessary. If you're just starting out especially, and even in general, there is this aspect of YouTube being raw and feeling kind of, you know, like it's just a person making these videos by themselves, homemade videos. Sometimes it's okay to just ramp up the shutter speed. I've been doing that quite a bit. We actually haven't even been using ND filters that much recently. Again, gear, gear is king. Just kidding. Gear is not king. Gear matters for sure, like I've said many times before, but the story also matters. And so, how do you tell the story? Maybe having, you know, the shutter speed higher makes it feel a little bit more um less production value, which can be a benefit on YouTube. I've actually heard Mr. B say that they use 1080 for their camera still, just to make it feel a little bit more like raw, which is really interesting. I don't think a lot of people think about that kind of stuff, but those are also storytelling decisions. So it's great if you have one, but you don't necessarily need one either. In terms of audio, I love this tiny Sony microphone. Now this thing is also very expensive and the sound isn't as high quality. Very convenient, you don't even need any sort of cord microphone cable going to the camera. It's really nice, but the audio quality just isn't quite as good as something like this, the Rode VideoMic Pro, which is I think the top of the line microphone, but pretty much any of these little shotgun microphones you're gonna be fine with. And unfortunately, the Gorillapod is still the best option for YouTube filmmaking. There's some other options out there like the Switch Pod, which, which are good, but for me, they just don't do everything I want. This is a lot more versatile. You can use it in so many different ways. You can hang it off stuff, which I rarely do, but it's just so versatile in how high you can put the camera. Now you can't, go very high, but you have almost zero adjustability on the switch pod right now. Now, I'm sure they'll figure out better ways of making it, but right now, I think the Gorillapod is still your best bet. We're not done yet. You're still gonna have to edit your videos. Right now, we are actually using Final Cut, which is a lot more affordable than Adobe Premiere, but there's also DaVinci Resolve, which is free. Um, so if you're just starting to learn, DaVinci is probably a great option. Final Cut isn't too expensive. Both are great options. And I think in terms of like an editing machine, if you have nothing right now, go with whatever you have. If you do have something, if you have nothing, I'd probably get a 13 inch M1. I've heard so many good things. I haven't used it myself, but I've heard so many good things. The battery life, how fast it is. Uh, yeah, I don't think you can go wrong with that. Oh, okay, that was a lot. Those are my recommendations for 2021 in terms of YouTube gear, vlogging gear, which is basically kind of the same thing. There's a lot of gear you need, but again, remember, you do not need the top of the line gear right away. I started off with, I think, a Canon 60D, was it a 60D? Something like that, I didn't even have the 80D when I first started filmmaking, and you just use what, actually, no wait, I used a literal daddy handy cam as the first camera ever for me. A daddy handy cam, my cell phone could barely do video, I don't even know if it could do video, it could take like very crappy photos. I used a little like, one of these, these cameras for my first videos. Doesn't matter, just start doing something. I think if, if the gear is limiting you, that's just an excuse. Start with your smartphone. Uh, I tell all my friends, my family, whoever wants to start a YouTube channel, don't let the gear scare you. Just start making something and then you'll kind of figure things out slowly and then you can start saving up for the more expensive gear. I hope this appeases all the questions that everybody asks me about, what camera do you think I should get? This is what I'm gonna send them. I hope it helps you. I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye. Oh, forgot my club soda. Bye.
Your ear is king! Is it?